Today, we are going to cover mole to mass stoichiometric conversions. In our last lesson, we covered mole to mole conversions, which will be a part of this conversion um, problem. So we'll start by drawing out our molar highway. And so we're going to start with moles of one substance, which I'm going to label moles of A, and we'll convert to moles of another substance, a different compound or element in the chemical reaction, and we'll call that moles of B. The conversion factor to convert from moles of one substance to moles of another substance is called the mole ratio. The mole ratio is from the coefficients in the balanced chemical equation. And then converting from moles of a substance to mass of that same substance is a conversion factor we already know and have used. So if you're converting from moles to grams or grams to moles, you use the molar mass. To find the molar mass, you calculate using the periodic table. So we're going to do two, two problems today. We're going to convert from um, grams to moles, and then we'll do a problem where we convert from um, moles to grams. So we'll go both directions of the molar highway. So how many moles of aluminum will react with 4.8 grams of manganese oxide, manganese 2 oxide? So I will do a little flow chart here under my... Um, chemical reaction. I'm going to convert from grams of manganese oxide to moles of manganese oxide and then convert from moles of manganese to oxide to moles of aluminum. And every arrow represents a conversion factor that we will need to do. So I'm going to start with what I was given 4.8 grams of manganese oxide set up my railroad tracks I'm going to put a one as a placeholder underneath you don't have to but I'm just going to do that as a placeholder the units grams of manganese 2 oxide are moved down and I cannot convert directly to moles of aluminum, but I can convert to moles of manganese 2 oxide. These units I can move down. And now I can convert from moles of manganese oxide to moles of aluminum, which is what I was asked for in the problem. So you can see that I have set up all the units first, and then I will go in and put in my units, or sorry, my number. So I put in the units first because dimensional analysis is driven by units. And then I will go in and put in my numbers. So this first conversion factor is the molar mass of manganese oxide. So I'm going to list each element in the compound. List how many. No, no subscript means I have one of each. Look at the periodic table and write down the mass from the periodic table with four sig figs for each element. Multiply, remembering sig figs, 
adding them together, remembering that sig figs is the number of least number of places behind the decimal point. So one mole of manganese two oxide is 70.94 grams. The second conversion here is the mole ratio. So I need to look at the balanced chemical equation. Two moles of aluminum react with three moles of manganese two oxide. So two moles of aluminum react with three moles of manganese oxide. Once you have your problem set up, your railroad track set up, you want to multiply the top of your railroad tracks, multiply the bottom, and divide. You need to remember sig figs. Mole ratio is not used to determine sig figs. So if I multiply across the top, multiply along the bottom, and divide, units cancel diagonally. So I'm left with what I was asked for, which is moles of aluminum. And it is important that you write the element or compound that you're solving for, not just moles, not just grams. In terms of sig figs, 4.8 has two sig figs, 70.94 has four, and we don't use mole or um, mole ratio to determine sig figs. So this answer will need two sig figs. So I'd have 0 0.045 moles of aluminum produced um, or needed in this reaction. So for this problem, we started at mass on the right hand of our molar highway and moved to the left to moles. In my second example, we're going to start at moles and move to the right um, and calculate mass. So how many grams of aluminum oxide are produced from 8.4 moles of aluminum? So I have 8.4 moles of aluminum. I'm going to, and I want to find out how many grams of aluminum oxide. So I need to convert from moles of aluminum to moles of aluminum oxide, from moles of aluminum oxide to grams of aluminum oxide. And again, every arrow that I drew is a conversion factor. You don't have to draw the flow chart under the equation. I just sometimes find it easier to look at where I'm at and where I want to go. So you always start with what you're given, the top of your railroad tracks, 8.4 moles of aluminum. And so the units that I have here, I will move down here. I cannot convert directly from moles of aluminum to grams of aluminum oxide, but I can convert from moles of aluminum to moles of aluminum oxide using the mole ratio. These units here, since I'm not where I want to be yet, are moved down here. And I do have a conversion factor to convert from moles of aluminum oxide to grams of aluminum oxide. And those units will go up here. Again, I set up all my units first because dimensional analysis is driven by the units. Then I go back in and I put in my numbers. So this first conversion factor here is mole ratio. And so I look at the balanced chemical equation and I have no number here, so that means one mole, and then I have a two here. So one mole of aluminum oxide forms from two moles of aluminum. This next conversion factor, the units are moles and grams, which means I have 
molar mass. So I'm going to list the elements in the compound. I have aluminum and I have oxygen. I'm going to list how many, two aluminum, three oxygen. I'm going to multiply by the molar mass from the periodic table for each one with four sig figs. And then sig figs from when you add are the least number of places behind the decimal point. So for every one mole of aluminum oxide, I have 101.96 grams of aluminum oxide. I need to um, multiply, I need to solve this now. And so I multiply the top of my railroad tracks, get an answer, multiply the bottom, get an answer, and divide. And then I need to round for sig figs. And so the least number of sig figs here would be from my moles of aluminum, two. So I'll have two sig figs in my answer. Units cancel diagonally. And so I would have 430 grams of aluminum oxide. That zero at the end is trailing. It is not significant. You will have, um, you have practice problems to do that are available in the chapter nine assignment folder. And then you will have a daily assessment over this um, material to um, try to earn a stoichiometry star. If you have any questions, please um, send me a message or attend one of my Zoom office hour sessions.